tweaking to round number two, while Andrew Luck is looking a lot like, well, Andrew Luck again, yeah. Pro Golf is also back with Xander Shoffley winning the Tournament of Champions in a huge way. And, of course, we've got the college football championship game between, yeah, you probably already know, Clemson and Alabama. Before we start every game on HQ Sports, we get on Twitter and get a warm-up in at HQ Sports on Twitter. Today marks the fourth postseason matchup between these two teams in four years and third in the championship game. Alabama winning two, Clemson winning one in 2016. So I want to know just how you all feel about another showdown between the Tigers and the Crimson Tide. Take a look at these beautiful playoff moments while I read your tweets. At Indy Rat Pack says, again, yawn. Yeah, you know what? I kind of feel you on that one, dude. At 13 KVB says, Alabama is my pick. I'm okay with the matchup being the same. Speaks to the excellence of the coaches. It's not easy to maintain football supremacy when your players have a max shelf life of four years. Yeah, you got a point there, my friend. At Ian1019 says, the CFP is a joke. They exclude half of college football before the season starts, and they don't take the best teams. Four is not nearly enough, especially with the bias in college football. At Chase Campen says, expand the playoff. And at USA Waldo says, Clemson will win. Then we will wait another four years before they finally decide that a four-team playoff just doesn't work. Well, listen, team, they are two of the greatest programs in college football, but I agree with USA Waldo. The postseason needs to be more inclusive to hold national interest. But in the meantime, my money tonight is on Bama. Roll Tide, baby. What I really want to see is Nick Saban in the NFL, maybe coaching a goat like Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, or perhaps a young, driven talent like Baker in Cleveland could make things very interesting as a fantasy owner. Am I right? As always, thank you for playing along with us at HQ Sports on Twitter. Okay, team, here's the rundown for tonight. 12 rounds, 12 questions, 12 opportunities to test your sports knowledge. Get them all right, and you win. It's as easy as that. No selection committee here. Tonight we're playing for $1,000. Think of that as a little scholarship money of your own. Unless you're like me and you never want to go back to school again, then uh, just buy yourself something nice with that, okay? Here are some insider tips to help you win. Erasers, have you heard of them? If you're stuck between answers, an eraser will remove one answer choice, giving you a 50-50 shot at choosing the correct one. You can earn them for free just by being near two other people playing HQ. So uh, tap your friends or coworkers or, you know, random strangers, but just be nice and tell them to open the HQ app. You'll all earn them. You can also improve your odds at winning if you have extra lives on hand. You can use one extra life per game, but never on the final round. Same goes for racers. So pick one up right now or invite new friends to play HQ to earn them for free. And one last thing, all of those points and levels you've been earning for getting questions right in HQ trivia, well, they're going to pay off in tomorrow night's first ever season finale game. Winners will split a $50,000 cash prize, and one will receive a 2019 Silverado pickup truck, courtesy of Chevy. That's at 9 p.m. Eastern Time Tuesday, meaning tomorrow, so you can play tonight's 9 p.m. game and tomorrow's 3 p.m. game for your last chance at points. Okay, team, pregame warm-up is complete. Let's get into it. There's a championship on the line. Oh, yeah, and some free cash. To the over 127,000 players, get set. Here comes round number one. In boxing, a knockout is declared when a fighter stays down for roughly how long? A fortnight, 10 seconds, one minute. Man, oh man, how embarrassing to get knocked out here in round number one. Listen, if you're down for two weeks, then yeah, that's most definitely a knockout. But it doesn't take that long to call it a fish. It only takes 10 seconds. 10 seconds to call a knockout. 99,355 of you not getting knocked out here and moving on to round number two. Here it is. What two teams were the first in FBS history to play each other in four straight postseasons? Michigan and USC, Notre Dame and Miami, Alabama and Clemson. I have no idea. Well, 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 if you tuned into the intro at all, then you're in good shape here. 
Yes, their fourth straight year meeting in the playoffs, third time in the title game. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's because the answer, of course, is Alabama and Clemson. We just talked about it. 57,868 of you knew that one. Wow, over 20,000 of you. You know what? It pays to come in a little early and pay attention at the top, my friends. Round three. Which of these is only an offensive penalty in football? Holding, offsides, false start. You definitely don't want to flinch here at round number three. It may cost you, team. Holding can go either way. Offsides is almost always a defensive penalty, but a false start goes against the team that is responsible for, you know, starting the play, which is the offense, of course. False start is the answer we were looking for. 36,674 of you. Moving on to round number four. They're getting tougher from here on out, team. Can you hang? Here it is. What women's college basketball team just broke UConn's streak of 126 regular season wins? Notre Dame, South Carolina, Baylor. And it's been 1,508 days between regular season losses. And the last time the Huskies lost a real road game in the regular season, it was in 2011. And to who? The Baylor Lady Bears. Yes. And they did it again it as number eight Brown Baylor beat number one UConn 68-57 in Waco, Texas. Yeah. Baylor is the answer here at round number four. 20,399 of you knew that one. Knocking out almost another 20,000 here in round number four. We're just getting started, team. It's round number five. Here we go. The NFL just announced its first official sponsor from what industry? Esports, cryptocurrency, casino. Ah, uh, yes, this is bound to happen as these three categories continue to infiltrate the sports world. The NFL may slowly be getting ready for the Las Vegas Raiders because this week, Caesars Entertainment was announced as the first ever official casino sponsor of the NFL. Casino is the answer here. 12,837 of you getting that one right. And we are now at our halfway point team. It's round number six. Which of these players recently put up a triple-double in his first game against his former team? DeMar DeRozan. Rosen, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard. You know what they say, team. Living well is the best revenge. But in this guy's case, I think it's playing well is even better, right? Five players have accomplished this bit of revenge, but the only one of these three to do it was former Raptor, current Spur, DeMar DeRozan. DeMar did not want to leave Toronto, and he made them pay with 24 points, 14 boards, and 11 assists in a win. DeMar DeRozan is the answer here at our halfway point round six. 7,821 of you are moving on to the second half. Here it is, round seven. What team will have the smallest seating capacity in the MLB this year? The Rays. A's or Marlins. And you know, HQ Sports officially has the largest seating capacity because you know you can sit wherever you want, right? Get it? No? Not so much? All right. Well, this one won't even be close. The Rays are closing down their rarely used upper deck, reducing capacity to around 25,000 or about 10,000 less than any other team. Sorry, Rays fans, all two of you out there. Rays is the answer here. 5,879 of you knew that one. We're calling the next shot, and it's round number eight. Here it is. Though they had a slightly different name, where were the first ever X Games held? Florida, California, Rhode Island. The X Games, team. Yes. You know what the X is for, right? Extreme sports! And what's more extreme than Newport, Rhode Island? Yeah, Newport. First X Games back in 1995, along with Vermont. And how 1995 is this video, team? Not as X as what we've gotten used to, right? Since then, it's gone all over the world. Much more extreme. But it started in Rhode Island. 3,357 of you knew that one. And we are getting a little bit more extreme in here, too. Round number nine. After sacks became an official stat in 1982, what player was the first to record 20 in an NFL season? Lawrence Taylor, Mark Gastineau, Reggie White. Love me a good pass rusher team. Listen, I've got four letters for you. 
J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Part of the New York Sack Exchange, Gastineau ran all over the league, setting the official record in 1984, sack dance and all. Yes, Mark Gastineau is your answer here. 1,908 of you getting that one right. And that record stood until 2001, when the host of pretty much all of daytime TV, Michael Strahan, then broke it. Round number 10. After, ba after Bonds, what Baseball Hall of Fame eligible player has the most home runs without being inducted? Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Manny Ramirez. Down to the final quarter here, team. Number two among home run hitters not in the hall is A-Rod, who might run into the same problem Barry has, but he's not eligible until 2022. Sammy Sosa and his 609 home runs are still being kept out of Cooperstown. Sammy Sosa is the answer here. 1,279 of you got that one right. I see over 100, over 200 people coming back in with their extra lives. Now's the time to use it if you want to get that money. We got two left. Round 11, here it is. Which college athletic conference is legally considered the successor to the Big East? AAC, Conference USA, ACC. Almost there, team. Now's when it matters the most. Listen, there is still technically a Big East, but legally, the successor to the Big East is the American Athletic Conference, which retains many of the original Big East schools. That's AAC. 838 of you knew that one. And hey, team, you know what that means. You are moving on to the final round. Yes, you made it through 11 grueling rounds. Now you got that puck on the ice. There's no one in front of you. Can you shoot this in for the goal? Let's see. It's round number 12. Here it is. Which of these players is not one of this year's four NHL All-Star captains? Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, Austin Matthews. Now it's where it matters, team. Tap that answer. One captain is chosen for each of the NHL's four divisions, and two of the players listed here are in the same division. So who could it be then? Well, Ovi was chosen to represent the Metropolitan, meaning Sidney Crosby was not one of this year's All-Star captains. Sidney Crosby's the answer. 565 of you knew that one, and congratulations, you're our new HQ Sports MVPs. <laughs> Yeah, 565 of you are our new winners. Looks like we're splitting a prize of about $1.77. All right, I like that. You know what I always say? It's a buck 77 more than you started with, team. Chris Curtin, 177, is coming your way. Swaggy B Smooth, ooh, I like that name. 177 is coming your way. Ace Gecko, 76ers fan, I see you there. 177 is coming your way. I mean, you could give a penny away and you'll get 176. Would that make you happy? I don't know. M2KG2V, it looks like you may be wearing a New York Yankee hat. And to you, I say, congrats. West Side, I see a little Chicago Bears action happening. Congrats to all of you. What a seamless win. Shout it from the rooftops. You are an HQ Sport MVP. Hey, want to win again? Come back on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Because you know we do this thing every Monday and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Keep up with us on Twitter at HQ Sports and me at Lauren underscore Gambino to participate in any pregame questions and to just be in the know of any schedule changes or some fun new games. Now, I'm off to chow down on some Archibald's barbecue. You think I could get that delivered to New York City in like the next five hours? Probably not, right? Anyway, until next time, I'm Lauren Gambino, reminding you to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in the game.